It's time. <laughs> Woo! Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lewis. I'm Olivia. And, well, here's the Let's Play I, you, I don't know about you, and everyone else have been waiting for. We are doing Fire Emblem for the Game Boy Advance, also known as Fire Emblem 7, also known as Fire Emblem Blazing Sword, also known as Fire Emblem the Blazing Blade, also known as Fire Emblem Re Reckon No Ken. That's, uh... Wow, that's a lot of titles. That is a lot of titles. Almost as bad as Street Fighter. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but it's, no, but that's edition. different ports. They haven't ported Fire Emblem 7 60,000 times. That'd be interesting. 60,000 ports of Fire Emblem 7. But, oh god. I have been looking forward to this game. And it, yeah, if you can see by the um, text scroll, this is a recap of uh, when man fought the dragons in the war. And there were eight legends. Does it sound familiar? Give me a minute. Hold on. Yeah, she's getting I'll, this. She's getting okay, it. I'll get it. Is this a recap of the one with Roy in it? Prequel. This is the prequel to Binding Blade. Yeah. Yeah, this is and that's uh, recapping the scouring, the war that went on. Oh. But yeah, this is a pre these are the eight legends. This is a prequel to Binding Blade. You know, for us it was just known as Fire Emblem Seven, or just Fire Emblem, because this was, as some as many of you know, this was the first Fire Emblem game to be released in the West. And oh boy, what a game to start with! See the title screen is just Fire Emblem. What a... This game's nearly 10 years old. What? No, no, it's nearly 15 years old. It's older than 10 years. That makes you feel old. Yeah, a little bit. No, the fact that Crash Bandicoot is over 20 years old makes me feel old. <laughs> makes me feel so old. But anyway, so... Yeah, for this game, we have our three main lords. We have Lin, we have Hector, and we have Ellawood. For this, we're going to start with Lin because you get to see the entire campaign. If you start with Ellawood or Hector, you go from chapter 11 to the end of the game. Lin's campaign acts as sort of a tutorial mode, which is necessary for this game because, and you can choose whichever difficulty for each, which for this game, it's necessary. I know some people don't like it, but it's necessary when you consider there is no other Fire Emblem, at the time there was no other Fire Emblem game officially released for the system. So it needed a tutorial. Okay, yeah, um, you have an avatar in this game, Canonically known as Mark, but you can make him whatever. So for this, this, is the, this was the the, the the tactician, the predecessor to Robin. Yeah, this is this is the Robin before Robin was a thing. So I'm going to call myself Lewis because you know, funny enough, some people there are some fan theories going around that Robin or Morgan is the tactician, both of which are stupid. I just think the tactician is a tactician. Yeah, I'm born in September, and yes, oh, I am. What male. they think Robin is this guy? Yeah, or, or Morgan is this guy? But that doesn't make sense. Exactly. It, it, I think it's I think it's reaching just because they're both tacticians. Yeah. And also that Lynn wasn't awakening as DLC, but that's DLC. I think this, the thing is with this one. Yeah. I feel like it takes place way before Awakening. Well, Awakening takes place like years after Shadow Dragon. This is like self-contained universe. I always thought like the Fire Emblem game, unless they are directly tied, they're all self-contained. Yeah. Unless there is a direct reference I, like I Echoes and uh, Shadow there's Dragon. There's like, n there's, it's like, it's such a thin piece of thread to connect the two games. You might as well not even bother. Yeah, I, I think that's no. Yeah, that's I reaching. That. So anyway, this is Lin. This is our main lord for the game. And... I love Lynn. Uh, she's, Everyone loves Lynn. Yeah, she is one of my favourite characters in the series. Um, as a unit, I'll talk about stats and growth rates now. She is pretty good. I mean, out of the Lords, she technically... If you want... All right, cut. Well, it varies because in Eliwood and Hector's campaign, they're forced to promote at Chapter 27. Lynn is not forced to promote. Her biggest problem is that her strength growth isn't as great as theirs and she's quite frail, but... Her class is based on the Myrmidon, and she's got ridiculous speed and skill, and her main weapon is amazing. So Lin is still really viable. Main thing with Lin is, because I hear this happen to a lot of people, a lot of people don't like her because she tends to get strength screwed. Like, I've had people where, by the end of the game, she's only got eight strength. Oh. <laughs> I was like, that's bad. I can tell you right now, because I kind of shouldn't have done this, but I've recorded all the way up to chapter 15 at the time of recording. Because I just couldn't put the game down, people. This is my favourite fire of the game. I was just like, I have to keep playing and recording everything. So, yeah. So, and currently, I can just tell you right now, Lynn did ne definitely didn't get strength screwed. But, um, she is really, she, she's a lord, so she's one of the best units. I mean, like, Ellawood is kind of just all round good. But, um, if you play normally, he like, um, and he also gets a mounted unit, which is good. But he's not as, like, fast as Lynn. And then there's Hector, who... <laughs> we'll get to him later. We'll get to good old Hector later. Um, good old Hector. Yeah, but Lynn is... Like, character-wise, I think she's the most interesting. And she's I not love... born a lord, is she? 
Te technically she is, but she isn't. We'll find out in the story. She's the granddaughter of a lord, but she's born just like a normal person. That's the tactician. You don't ever see his face. He's just yeah. in green. He's just a rabbit. Yeah. Um, uh, so, right now, uh, bandits are attacking, and Lin's going off to fight them. And basically, you're the tactician. you got to tell Lin what to do. And this, I'm going to tell you, Lin's campaign is mostly a tutorial. Mostly. For a while, for the first couple of chapters, it's just going to be like, you know... The game is explaining stuff to you and you just got to do what the game tells you. You do get freedom later on. If you play hard mode, you don't have to do what the game tells you. But because I'm doing normal mode, where, you know, this first couple of parts, it will be, you know, kind of tutorial-ish. But it's necessary. And to be fair, as far as force tutorial goes, I think Fire Emblem 7 does it, like, kind of the best. Go on, exp expand. Because not only does it tell you what to do and have, like, fixed stuff, um, but, like, as the game goes further on, slowly and slowly, you get much more freedom. Like, in this first part, you have, like, pretty much no freedom. But as yeah. every chapter goes on, it breaks in a bit more, and then you're free to do whatever you like. And I really like that. I think the tutorial works well, but it also works well as just a campaign for Lin. It's a self-contained thing, and it works. If you're going to have a tutorial, I think Fire Emblem 7 does it really, really well. And that's why I think Fire Emblem 7 is one of the best places to start if you've never played it, because it teaches you not everything, but it teaches you what you need to know, and it gets you going into the series, and you, know, you need to know all the basics. So it does a fantastic job. I run it because this is one of the latest Fire Emblem games I played. <laughs> Despite, you know, having emulators yeah. back then. You've never played this game, have you? No, I haven't. Mm. I haven't even finished Sacred Stone. I haven't even finished Birthright, God. I know Fire Emblem games, like, I get into them. I don't know whether this is just the new ones or not, like... I don't know whether this is just Fates or not. But I just can't... I just forget. I, I think it's more to do with the case of... Um, you like that with a lot of games, you still haven't beat Pandora's Tower. Oh, okay. Because remember, you were playing Thingy for a while, and then I bought Spyro 2. Oh, that, that game was like, attacked me. <laughs> and you're just like, can't stop playing! Can't stop playing! So yeah, so yeah, she starts out really fast and high skill. Nice dodge. Um, but yeah, all of this is fixed, by the way. For, for this chapter, it's all fixed. At least I think it's fixed. I'm pretty sure it's fixed. But yeah, for the while, the chapters will be kind of tutorial-ish. I'm going to kind of just kind of go with the flow, but it's still going to be cool. Um... The reason we're not doing hard mode is because hard mode is we're going to save that for Hector's campaign. Because Hector's campaign is not just you play the game from Hector's perspective. You do get exclusive chapters for Hector's mode and he gets like different conversations and stuff like that. But also Hector hard mode is interesting as like not only do enemy layouts change but their levels change and their AI changes. So Hector hard mode has a lot to offer. So you know I'm going to tackle that at some point. Um, am I doing it straight after Blazing Sword? No because no. I still need my Fire Emblem breaks. But as far as hard mode runs of games go, uh, Fire Emblem games go, Hector um, 7 will probably be the first because it feels the most different. So that's probably how it's going to work out. Um, God, what else was I going to say? I was thinking, oh yeah, also, certain parts, especially in Lin's campaign, we're combine I'm combining multiple chapters into like one thing. Because this part is half an hour long, but it consists of two chapters because like this chapter is only about 10 minutes. Yeah. And I can't like, upload a 10 minute part. So I combine the two, and it happens the same with like the next chapter. It's two chapters combined into one. So some part, like this is mostly just for Lin's campaign. As the game goes on, it will become longer. It will become like one part. But I'll tell you right now, I don't think it's ever going to be as long as Binding Blades part, where they were up to like. I remember because at chapter twenty-one, that was like fucking two hours. So. So. With Lin's campaign, if you play her campaign from the beginning. Yeah. Like. Like, you know how with Ellerwood, yeah. you start at chapter 11, he's like the main guy you follow. Yeah. If you start with Lin, do you, would you follow Lin all throughout? No, 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 you just go back to Ellerwood, you just get like Lin's own story. And what about Hector? Hector, you follow Hector. I mean, to be fair, they all coincide at some point, they all just yeah. follow each other. It's just, Thingy focuses on Ellerwood's perspective, Lin, this one has Lin's opening bit, critical hit, nice. Um, that's fixed anyway. And Hector's one has Hector's perspective. So Lin... Uh-huh. Lin's... So Lin's story goes into Ellerwood. They all connect, yeah. At chapter 11? Yeah, once you beat chapter 10. Because Lin's campaign is like, a, oh, see, oh, she, oh, that's a good growth start. <laughs> that's a, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's a good start. Uh, but the main reason Lin's doing what she's doing, and you asked about, um, is she a lord? Because Lin is like, you know, like Sue and Sin? She's born, yeah. she's native to Sakaia. Yeah. Where, you know, she was born there. Her mother was a lord. But she want, but she fell in love with a with a you know a nomad, a commoner. 
and she moved there and stuff like that. The entire village got wiped out by bandits. They're all dead. And now, well, and Lin, like, basically, like, right now we were fighting off bandits, and Lin makes it her goal at first to go and snuff them out because she wants revenge. Yeah, yeah but start with a revenge story. But she learns later on about her grandfather's existence and then wants to meet him just so they can be a family again. And she does in become a lord and inherit the title. So she doesn't start as one, but she is one and she becomes one. Oh, she's one. a nomad, isn't she? Yeah. She, she dresses like Sue. Well, she's like, yeah, that type of thing, but she has her own, like, design. She has my favourite design in the series, actually. Do you think actually. there is any relation? That's the thing. Raph is Sue's father. One of Raph's supports, which some consider canon, is Lin. So, Lin, Sue's mother. Oh! Which begs the question, where were you in Binding Blade? Where were you? To be fair, I don't think they ever thought of Lin until this game because of tutorial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, like, they had no connecting and then they thought, oh shit, we need to make a character. Let's make a tutorial character. She turns out to be one of the best in the game. Yeah, see, she's the last of her tribe. Everyone else is dead, oh. which is- So, so wait, Sue's dad- Rath, we'll find him later on. It's called Rath. Yeah. Okay, so I thought you said Lin's dad was called Rath. No, 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 Sue's way. dad is called Rath. Rath with an R, not a W. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay, I get it. She, she, she gets it, people, she gets it. I get it, it's piecing together in my head. Yeah. So yeah, it starts out as a very simple revenge story, but it does evolve into something more. And the, the campaign, even though it's a tutorial, it does a good job at just setting up Lin's character and her journey, because it's not a big thing. It's just a, like, to be fair, Seven's story, when I think about it, it's a more personal story. Like, it's it's kind of in the middle in terms of scope, as far as the games go. Yeah. I'd say it's smaller than Binding Blade, but I'd say it's better than Binding Blade story, because there's more ded time dedicated to the characters and their arcs. Like, Binding Blade was just kind of, all right, let's stop burn. We'll have a few moments to actually consider what's going on, but aside from that, let's just stop burn. This one, it's more about, you know, the struggles of Lynn, Hector, Elwood, them coming to terms with what's going on, and all that jazz. Yeah. But oh my god, I love this game so much. Um, also, speaking of Hector Hard Mode, one thing I plan to do with this game is depend... Yeah, so this is just, you know, the game telling you, good luck, you're going to need it. Um, so, with Hector Hard Mode, what I plan to do, which was going to be interesting, because remember how in Binding Blade, the game had massive balance issues when we had, like, um, Wendy and Sophia were, like, terrible units, but yeah. even though I trained them really well. This game, aside from one unit, or maybe two, everyone is very well balanced, so every character can do well. Some will be better than others, but no character, aside from, like, there are two in particular, one, one in particular I can think of off the top of my head, is bad. Everyone can come in, jump in, and be fine. So, the plan was, the team that I have in Blazix in normal mode, hard mode, aside from Lynn Hector, completely different team. No two units are the same. So, like for instance, we're gonna see these Cavaliers later on and I'll explain. Just so I think it will be more interesting because I'm not losing out by like saying not using this because I can just replace him with this. Yeah. But also, it works in this regard because if anyone gets RNG screwed, I can quickly switch out to anyone ah. new that comes in. So let's say, for instance, let's take the Archer Rebecca who we get. Let's say she's doing all right. Um, she's doing okay, not particularly good. Her growth's not been too great. And then later on, we get Louise, who's better in every way. I'll be like, all right, Rebecca, get out. Yeah. <laughs> Just get Louise. Okay, so here come our two Cavaliers. First up, when he decides, is Sane. Okay, Sane and, and the other one, Kent, who we're going to see soon, they're part of the whole Kane and Abel archetype. Sane, his strength growth is good, his HP growth is good. The rest of it's not so great, but it's all right. He hits really hard. Out of the two Cavaliers, I prefer using him mainly for his strength, and I tend to get good with him. So he's a good choice to use. So, you know, either Kent has better speed and skill, not strong, but, you know, he's still well-rounded well and all that stuff. Either one you can go with, but... The reason I love Sane is because, you know Inigo's, like, flirty playboyness? Mm -hmm. Jack that up to a thousand and you've got Sane. <laughs> jack it up to a thousand. Literally, you jack it up to a thousand and you have Sane. It's so... so I love Sane. So, this is why I'm, like, he's the one I pick the most because, oh, he's just like... Funny. No, every time he sees a woman, he would try to wow her so and much. Just... And one of my favorite parts later on is when they recruit two other characters and then Lin asks Ken, Kent, how do you feel about this? It's like, okay, I'm all right with it. She goes, say, what about, you know what I know what you're going to say? <laughs> because the characters are like a really pretty yeah. dancer. Before she visits, like, you know what, say, I know what you're going to say. I don't even go to bother. 
It's like, just, no, forget it. So who's the one unit in this game who is worse? Um, that's Nino, because she comes in, like, right near the end of the game. She's not even promoted, and she she's not particularly high level. I mean, I'm... All right, we'll get to that later. Um, you can... She has high growth, and she can be really strong. It's just that she comes in, and there's only, like, what? Four or five chapters left? Yeah. So what, what class is she? Mage. Mage. Yeah. So anyway, about Nino. Because... All right. Because everyone in the comments was going on about this. How... You know how somehow I made Sophia and Wendy good? Yeah. You're going to try to do this. No, one. I've got to... Depending on the game, because balance gets better later on. Depending on the game, I've got to train a bad unit in every fireman game. In this case, I have to use Nino. So, which isn't too bad because she's not dreadful. She's still bad, but she's not like dreadful in my opinion. But, you know, so for this game, I've got to use Nino. Sacred Stones is weird because I can grind, so I don't really know how it's going to work. Path of Radiance, I I'm going to use Soph. I have to use Soph. Radiant Dawn, I've got too many options. <laughs> got so many options. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how, I don't really know about Awakening since the only bad one really is Donald, but even then, everyone knows how broken Donald can be. Yeah. And, well, Birthright, there isn't really a bad one. No, I'm not using fucking Gunter in Conquest. Fuck off, I'm not, I'm not using Gunter. And Revelations, I don't fucking know. I'll get, I'll, I'll come around to it when I come around to it. But no, I'm not using Gunter. I don't care if he's a bad, he's like the only bad unit in Conquest. I ain't using him. That game does not <laughs> forgive you for using bad units. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's start, right, with the question. Yep. Um, in this game, who are your supports? We'll start with Lin. Okay, for normal mode, I'm going to make it Raph. For this one, Raph and Lin. But this is actually one of the best things. Lin is one of the, I think support-wise, she's one of the best characters because I love all her supports and I love all her ships. For Hector's mode, I'm actually pairing up with Ellawood. Oh! Yeah. I you really, you really like Hel I mean, the main two ships at Hollywood are Hector and Lynn and Raph and Lynn. I think Raph and Lynn is better, but I still like Hector and Lynn. Yeah. But I also really like Ellawood and Lynn, and I think it's underrated, so I'm doing that. But for Ellawood's mode, it's Ellawood and Ninian, because that is my favorite ship in the entire series. It is the best Fire Emblem ship, in my opinion. I fucking love Ellawood and Lynn so much. It's wonderful. Other characters, it depends, because I know what I want my team to be for this campaign. But, if someone gets RNG screwed, they can fuck off. Like, I have in mind who I want it to be. But if someone gets RNG screwed, I'll be like, alright, you, get, get, get out, get, get out. Get out. <laughs> so, I'll try to, yeah, you know, I'll try to do it as best as possible. And hopefully they'll all be good. But if someone does get fucked over, I am switching out. Um, so, he, yeah, um, here the game also starts to teach you about cover and stuff. Uh, my history with Final Fantasy VII is an interesting one, because... I got, I got this and Sacred Stones at the same time, but I went to say, play Sacred Stones first and I fucking loved Sacred Stones so much when I first played it, I was like, and I still do. Yeah. Because I played that game and I beat it all the way through, going into 7, I don't know what it was. It was either a case of, I was Sacred Stone, I was so, I played so much Sacred Stones that I was Fire Emblem out that I just didn't feel like it, or because of the tutorial mode, I just didn't have the attention span for it, so anyway, off goes Saint to attack and fucks it up. <laughs> But he's meant to do that. Yeah, it was teaching you about um, weapon triangle. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, um, I just didn't play it. I completely ignored it. And here's the thing, I would go back to Sacred Stones over and over again over the years. I didn't touch Seven for God knows how long, and I don't know why. I don't know what it was, I just didn't touch Seven. Once I started playing Awakening, and then Path of Radiance, and then Radiant Dawn, and then I played Shadow Dragon, it's like, you know what? Because it was on the Wii U Virtual Console. Yeah, by the way, we're recording this off the Wii U Virtual Console, which is why there's that there's that um, background there because the other bits are just black and it looks yeah. kind of awkward. Um, so I went to I was like, all right, you know what? I'll buy it off the Wii U Virtual Console. Best decision ever <laughs> because as of now, this is my favorite Fire Emblem game, and I have yet to see like the only one that comes close is Path of Radiance, but even that can't be this game because it's one of those cases where it's not the best at doing like everything but rather it does everything in my opinion so well it's just oh i love fire Emblem 7 so much it's such a good game it's it's just it's oh, oh I love, oh, this is why I, this is why i was playing so much of it while recording it was just so much fun like 
there's not a point in this game, alright, aside from maybe one chapter, there's not a point in this game where I'm like, I don't want to play this, or, oh, this is getting boring. I, like, the cast is great, it's really well balanced in terms of difficulty, its map structure is overall really good. The, oh, it, the story, not the best, but still a really good story. God, ah, oh, 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 yeah, see unlike Binding Blade where I'm gonna be like critiquing the map design and stuff all the time I'm just gonna be gushing over this game So yeah, well, I like a, so yeah, this will be quite tutorial heavy at the beginning But aside from that it will you know, it will slowly start to venture out and um, just you know Become its own thing so bear with it for the first couple of chapters But once it's done then we'll get into the full swing of things and see how it goes and there will, and also, one other thing about this game, even though it is a prequel to Binding Blade, best thing about this game, you do not need to play Binding Blade to enjoy this game or get the most out of it. You can, you know, yeah, if you try to go do what the game doesn't tell you, the game will slap you across the face and say, hey, hey, go back and do it. It's like, but I don't want to, I said do it, what? Okay. Yeah, and, well, he missed, but he misses in return. I don't know how he missed in 87, but this also talks to you about how, you know, terrain, is a big benefit. Um, but like I said, you know, it does a wonderful job at setting up Binding Blade, but the story is also self-contained and you don't have to play Binding Blade to enjoy it, so that's another thing I really like. Because I had not played Binding Blade before this, but I still got loads out of the game. Yeah. Then going back, playing Binding Blade, I was like, oh, I see what they did. Yeah, 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 I get that, I get that, I get that. Still doesn't explain why Win why Lin wasn't in it. And you know, the entire time I was playing Binding Blade, I was like, where's Lin, where's Lin, where's Lin, where's Lin, where's Lin, where's Lin, where's Lin? Where's Lin? Then you realise Binding Blade came up. Yeah, yeah, which is why I've said it bajillion times. They remake Binding Blade. If you have to include a character, put Lin in the damn game. Especially because we fucking go to Sakaya and we have Raph's daughter. That's true. It's kind of like a no-brainer. It's like, she's like, she's begging for it. Yeah. Because Lin stands as one of the most important characters. Like, a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia bias towards Lin. In the sense that, you know first the first like character they were introduced to in the yeah. west so there's a lot of like bias there it's the same way a lot of people who play awakening they have a lot of like favoritism towards like lucina and robin and stuff um so she is one of the most popular because mo she came first in remember she came first in the fire and heroes gauntlet she she? yeah she came first out of everyone she was like first to get in she was one of the first ones there um so she is one of the best characters ever so could someone explain to me why she's not in warriors yeah, I can neither. Well, Nintendo. Got some answers there, do you? Yeah, okay, okay. Got, got some questions to answer. Got some questions. Yeah, I know. But everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> when that news dropped, like, okay, you're not gonna do um, Sacred Stones, alright. You're not gonna do Gaiden, okay. You're not gonna do Gianji, alright. Oh, yeah, we're not gonna do Lin or Ike. Fuck you! <laughs> wow. That's like making. A um a full no, 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 I'm trying to think of like a mod like all right let's say they make a Marvel Dynasty Warriors oh yeah we're not doing Spider Man what, what? Oh, no, no we're not doing Iron Man what okay do you want your game to sell <laughs> yeah we're gonna do fucking like uh, we're gonna do Captain America and we're gonna do like Guardians and we're gonna, we're gonna like pull some obscure shit like in humans yeah it's like right. who gives a flying fuck do you want your games to push sales. To be fair though, like, they are they are going with the push sales approach, Awakening Fates Shadow Dragon. Yeah. But come on! <laughs> Lin! And since she's still trying to woo Lin. Oh, I know what would be DLC. Maybe. What if it's not even DLC? What if DLC is just more characters from the same three games? Then I weep for you. I weep for us all. I weep for the Fire Emblem fan base. <gasps> oh, I got so I found out some news. It was like, you know how there's a new Steven Universe game? Yeah. It's called Attack the Light or something. So, like, so there are eight playable characters. Yeah, by the way, um, we're still getting on Steven Universe because fuck it. Um, Steven, Connie, Greg, Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl. And we're thinking Lapis and Peridot. Mm -hmm. And that, and then, but then it's like, um, but then they said one character's gonna be DLC. And I'm praying it's Jasper! It's gonna be Topaz. I'm praying! No, no, no. Do you know who it's gonna be? Ronaldo. It's gonna be Ronaldo, and I'm just gonna break the game. <laughs> but I no, care. fuck this! <laughs> Like, I don't care. I don't care if she's technically evil right now. She's a she fucking great choice for a character. And yeah. I'm just like, please. 
it's, I know, it's I not know. in now. Actually, that reminds me. Today, I've got to buy. There's a new Steven Universe book called Art and Origins. Mm -hmm. The Arkham Origins. Steven Universe Arkham Origins. What Steven's Batman? And it's it's just like an art book of all concept art and stuff that was new. I'm like, I wonder what Jasper. I wonder what they would have looked like. I want to see what Jasper used to look. So I'm like. And what if, what if it's just Vegeta? It is like, Vegeta. What if it's just Vegeta. It's like, but this is Vegeta. Exactly. I think it's 20 quid on Amazon. So that's a lot of money for just a book. It's yeah, 206 yeah, no. pages. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of pages. And it's all like, oh, no, like, I don't care how much it is. It's Steam Universe concept art. I'm buying that shit. All right, fair enough. Oh, God. I can listen to Saints dialogue for like fucking ages. And I love his support of anyone that has a vagina. <laughs> Literally, so, like say. I bet he'd even do it to some males. I bet if he could. He, no, he'd probably look at like he'd probably see um, like um, who's a really like Lucius or Forrest. No, he see Libra and be like, okay. I totally hit that. <laughs> and then it's like, by the way, I'm a dude. Still do it. Still do it. I ain't picky. <laughs> Uh, but I, that's why Sane is my like pretty much one of my favorite Cavaliers. Like stat wise, he's not one of the best, but oh, I love how he's just like, yeah, I will fuck anything and everything. I like them. The character. They may not be the best character, but they have the personality. Yeah, Sane has that personality of just like, oh yeah, I'm so going to, I'm going to hit that. And he just tries to hit on everyone. It's so funny. But after the time, it's like, Sane, I do not have time for your shit. Also, okay. weird about this game, the battle sprites, like even when I just press the A button, they move across the map really quickly. Like they go, Zoop. yeah, like here it's fine because I'm not pressing anything. But even when I just click the A button, it's weird. I don't know if it's like a weird thing with the Wii U port or maybe the A button is just hypersensitive, but I don't know. It's weird. It's very, very, very weird. His name is Kent. His name is Kent. Kent Insane. I was thinking of Kent um, Brockman from Simpsons. He's not a reporter, trust me. The only thing he reports on is um, all the, all the um, wonderful ladies. That would be sick. Hello, pretty ladies. That saying is when he reports and like, welcome to your female Yeah, the like, side boob hour. Like, and I don't know how Lynn got hit by that, but oh well. Oh yeah. Our in All right, so far from recording, like I've said, like a lot of people, a lot of people have said like Seven's orangey as shit. It's been otherwise fine so far with one or two exceptions, but nothing compared to Binding Blade. I don't think anything will compare to that yeah. game. That, that orange Must you remember Roy and his constant blundering? Oh, why are you so good in Smash? So. He's not even that good in no, Smash. Like, he's power. He's strong. He's yeah. so strong in it's Smash. His, no, it's his weapon is strong. He is not strong. Yeah, and he the Binding bad. Blade makes Roy. Without the weapon, he, Roy is shit. I just like Roy. Why? Why? I expected you to be better. You're in Smash. Oh, yeah. that's why Lin, you know what? You're not one for dodging, but at least you kill the enemy. There was only supposed to, to be fair, even with just Lin, she could have taken those guys out so easily, just stand in the trees. Let's see what she gets this time and see if, see if she continues to get RNG blessed. Eh, more defense. To be fair, like I said, if they get level up to the categories they shouldn't be getting level ups, I'm all for it. Ah, yes, fantastic work, me. Yes. Okay, um, this game is a lot of like um, these artwork things. Like Binding Blade had like f a few of them at the end. These are, they pop up a lot during the game, and I really like them. <laughs> Say it's hand. Can I grope your chest? Same. Same. We talked about this. Please. To be fair, I'd love to see that. Actually, I this is why Sane, no, Sane should have been in Farming Warriors because one of the things they plan to do is have conversa support conversations with characters from different games. So yeah. like, I'd love to see that because I'd love to see Karuna Farge have my avatar is you're better than your avatar yeah. fight. <laughs> it's like, uh, Corrin, uh, Robin. Same, same in the middle, like, yeah. No, no, Sane tries to hit on every single female Fire Emblem character. Like, fuck off. <laughs> She's like, Sane, fuck off Please. or I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> it's like, it's worth it. <laughs> Hmm, what support would I like to see between two different pirates? I'd love to see Cordelia. No, I cannot wait to see Cordelia support with Minerva. My idol! <laughs> it's like, I named my dragon after you! <laughs> you mean Churche? Yeah, that's it. Why Cordelia? Why the hell? Oh, Church. sorry, it's the blood. It's the riding of yeah. Mount and the red hair. Church. Yeah, Shersh. Shersh and Thingamajig. That would be hilarious. Or, like, um, I'm trying to think. Just. 
just characters. Actually, I'd love to see Crom and Ella would talk because they have dad issues. Oh, daddy issues. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Roy's always running around being in it. Yeah, Lucina's constantly getting herself into trouble. Manuel. Fucking kids. Yeah. No, best one ever. Ike and Hector support. Why? Because he Cause Ike is really stubborn. Like with people, and he doesn't. And he's not huge on lords. And X is so arrogant and like rash, and doesn't take shit from no one. Oh. So him and I could be like, I'm gonna fucking murder you. It's like, fuck, it's like Hector does something. It's like Ike's like Hector, stop being idiot. It's like fuck you, Ike. It's like, oh, is that how it's gonna be? Let's go. Let's go. Let's do. Bro, take this outside. Let's go. Let's go. Which I would love to see. Yo, if they, that's why warriors need more. If they had those supports, I'd be like, oh, best thing ever. Literally best thing ever. Or we could just have like character, like like I said with the Minerva and Shirsh, just have like um like Xander support with cameras because it's all based on an archetype. Ah. Stuff like that would be it'd be pretty funny. Well, have Corin interact with Robin, and then Robin's like, I'm. The no, Robin, no, Rob, like, hi there, hi there, nice to meet you. Robin goes, you're a disgrace to the cut, to, to you're a disgrace to the Avatar. She's like, I'm, a more, I'm a more interesting and better version of you. No, to be fair, they're using female chorus. So what Robin would say, you want my kids? Who's that? Well, have kids. To be fair though, could you imagine uh, Morgan and Kana with Robin and Corrin's skills and stats? Shit. It just gave birth to God. <laughs> Alright, we're not allowed to let Robin and Corrin get in within proximity of each other, otherwise they will breed. And they're confirmed for warriors. <laughs> you know what they're got don't ever Alright, people, if you buy farming warriors, don't let Robin and Corrin support. They will birth a child and it will break the fire in the universe. You know, like, don't do it. You know that like, with dogs who've got to hold their collars? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold, no, when oh. Corrin's in dragon form. Hold him down, hold him down. Hey, hey, come here. Corrin, Corrin. Corrin. Bad Corrin, bad. Bad Corrin. Oh. <laughs> and Robin's like, let me go. And Corrin's like, no, don't do it. <laughs> you can't just put your dick in everything. Says you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think. No, it's like, no one, it's like, there is no one out there in more horny than me. And then Sanger says, uh, uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we need Robin, Cor no, we need Robin, we need Sane, we need Inigo, and we need Gaytree as the four-man group. It's Just four literally man. put their dick in whatever they want, whatever I mean, they, the, the moment they see, if they, they have a vagina sensor. It's like, it's like my vagina sensors are tingling. <laughs> Forget Spidey sense. No, the only thing is that Libra throws them off occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. ding, 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 ding. Go over there. Oh wait, wait. No, ding, pin ding. it down, pin it down. Oh shit. Oh, she's Libra again. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck Libra, you keep doing this. Hey, you're the ones making the mistake. I thought you would have learned by now. <laughs> God, I learned that the hard way. I know, I learned it too. I, I, even though Chrom specifically said it in the recruitment bit. I, I skipped that bit, so I didn't even read it. It's like, oh, 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 like, oh, yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of part one of Blazing Sword. When we come back, we are going to be moving on with the game and getting some new units and Lin's BFF. But until then, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.